Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The feeding of the 5,000, our text for today, we see the Lord's love and compassion upon his people. If you take a look at that text, you'll notice in the brackets is after he had heard about the death of John, and that would be John the Baptist, the one that is the cousin of Jesus, who baptized Jesus in the Jordan River, who pointed to the Lord and said, that is the Lamb of God. Jesus has just heard about John's death. And God, being in love and also having humanity in himself, grieves John. It's not explicitly told in our text whether Jesus does grieve, but I'd imagine as he goes into this desolate place to pray, he is dealing with the loss of his good friend, cousin, and prophet, John. He goes out to this desolate place to pray, but everybody hears that's where he's going to be, and the crowds join in and come to that place. Jesus could have easily sent them away and said, I need to pray. But he looked upon each and every single one of them and had compassion. And he healed them. And he went and healed and talked with them all the way till evening. And at evening, it was decided that everybody needed to go home or into the town to eat. But Jesus, having compassion on the people, says no to the disciples. You feed them. There's only five loaves and two fish. But having compassion on the disciples, he says, I will do it. Bring them here to me. He lifts them before the Father and prays and breaks them and distributes them using the disciples. And the disciples go out to the people and feed the 5,000. Five loaves and two fish feed the 5,000 with such abundance that all were satisfied. And the broken pieces filled up 12 baskets full. And I remind you that 5,000 is just counting the men not the women and children. There is a multitude here to receive what the Lord is giving to them so that they are fed. God feeds his people. He has compassion on his people. And it's not just a compassion or a feeding because they are hungry, but a compassion and a feeding of the body and the Spirit. The Lord does that. Both and the body and the Spirit because He has compassion and love for His people. The Lord has compassion and love for you as well. He wants to see you well fed. Both body and spirit. The feeding of the 5,000 happens in a time there in our gospel. And in fact, it's written in all four gospels to show how important it is. But its place within the scriptures is not just a moment in time. It is a symbol for all the times that the Lord feeds us. Has fed his people through the Old Testament we immediately can think of the Israelites in the wilderness there with Moses, and they are fed from manna from heaven. We think about the showbread in the tabernacle to feed his priests. We think about the little cakes of food that are given by angels for the prophets to eat, to be sustained on their journey. He feeds his people. He builds them up. Up. I would have loved to have been there with the 5,000 to eat and be built up in the Lord, to be made into his image, to his likeness as Christ for us. 
to truly be little Christ Christians, building up because of what God feeds to us. I can't help but think how awesome it would have been to be there, and I imagine you would have liked to have been there to be built up in the Lord. It reminds us of our school theme from Hebrews 3, 4. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. God builds all things. He builds all his people by feeding to them all of his blessings. He feeds you his very means of grace. If you've forgotten what that means after confirmation, means of grace is the way that God gives to you his blessings. And chiefly among them, forgiveness. It is here that that message of the feeding of the 5,000 continues for you. Here in this place, you are fed by the means of grace. The two sacraments, the Lord's Supper here, giving to you body and blood so that you might have forgiveness. Baptism, where water and word are combined together to give you the Holy Spirit, forgiveness and life. And the preaching of the word, so that you may hear the law where we have fallen short of God, but also the sweet nectar of the gospel that covers up our sins so that we have forgiveness and salvation and life, and that life everlasting found in Christ on the cross. That message, that feeding of you being fed in your life starts here, but continues at home where your devotions, your prayers, your reading and opening up the Scripture continues to feed you the very life bread of God. And in our school, that continues as well. It repeats what happens here and at home in our school that our children might hear the gospel, that they would hear how their sins are forgiven, that they would be fed daily all that they would need to be built up in their spiritual lives. It is a wonderful, blessed, miraculous feeding that our Lord gives to us each and every day, and we desire it because our bodies were built to look to our God and receive, receive all that he has to give to us. That we may eat, take into ourselves, be built up, by his very word. That would be the good Christian way. That would be what we would desire if we walked step in step with our Lord, but the reality is we desire to eat other things, to be fed by the world. I'll give you an idea here. By the time we get out of here, it'd be 1136. Check your watches on that. (laughs) But I bet you your stomachs, your tummies will be telling you, I need to be fed. Oftentimes when I'm in my office, I think, should I go home real quick, grab something to eat and come back, grab something in the office, or should I open that drawer that has all my candy right there? Twix, Kit Kats, all of that food. But it's not rich food. It's junk food. And our Isaiah text reminds us that the Lord gives rich, good food so that we are fed. He gives us good, rich wine to drink so that we are built up in faithfulness to him. And that food, that food of faithfulness comes at no cost to us. But the cost, the very death, of our Lord Jesus, the one who feeds us. But we'd rather pay the cost to eat sometimes. We'd rather pay the cost of being angry. We'd rather pay the cost of being jealous to covetousness. We'd rather pay the cost of putting our Lord, our God, away for a moment to eat and be fed by the world. But that feeding... That eating of what the world may give does not 
fill us. It costs us in sin. But the Lord has compassion. As He had compassion on the feeding of the 5,000, He has compassion on you and continually gives to you good food to eat to faithfulness, bought by His Son, so that we eat freely of the faith. Even in the most desolate places, God is there providing His Word. He has compassion on you to feed you. I got to see some of that compassion, that feeding, when I went off to the Synod Convention, that week-long voters meeting. I got to see how the Lord can provide. I got to see a banquet of 1,500 people. But even more than that, I got to see the Lord's Supper given to 1,500 people. All in one sitting as we came together as a church to eat the very body and blood of Christ for our forgiveness and faithfulness. I thought that was amazing. It doesn't really come close to feeding a 5,000 plus. But I couldn't help but think of a year ago at the National Youth Gathering, 22,000 students and chaperones being fed the Lord's Supper all in one sitting. What a miraculous blessing. That may overcome the feeding of the 5,000, but I tell you there is still something even greater. The compassion of our Lord is shown even greater. The feeding of us is shown even greater. Because each weekend, we gather as a church together to eat. But churches throughout the world gather each weekend to eat the Lord's Supper. Our synod gathers together in hundreds of thousands. The faithful gather together in millions to eat. The Lord feeds us so that we are fed bodily and spiritually to faithfulness. That is a wonderful miracle. And we are all joined in together in that because of the work of the cross. The feeding that is given to us, the 5,000, those in the desert with Israel, all the cakes given to the prophet here today, all throughout the world, finds its locality, its purpose, its fulfillment in Christ. And I remind you, this feast we are about to eat is really just a foretaste. As good as this meal is, it is just the foretaste of the feast to come when all the faithful are gathered together to eat in the banquet hall of our Lord in heaven. Our God is compassionate and feeds us each and every day. Desire His Word because He gives it freely at no cost to you. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.